<coughs> As usual, I'll read off a couple of items for housekeeping purposes. Uh, for those that are joining, for joining us that are residents or uh, outside of the staff or council, welcome to our July 7th, 2020 City Council meeting. This meeting is being held remotely. I'd like to go over a few logistics so that we can have a productive meeting. Consistent with Governor Inslee's order, uh, 2028, dated March 21st, 2020, and a continuation of his safe start, stay healthy directive. All public meetings continue to be held remotely. We're following the directions of that order. On this agenda are routine and necessary action for the council to consider. We also will provide two opportunities for the public to provide comments. Um, I would like, I will uh, let everybody know who's in the room. We have city, our city administrator, Katie Allen, our city clerk, Ann Swenson, our police chief, Brian Asmus, operations and maintenance director, Jennifer Camp, Liberty Lake Municipal Library director, Jocelyn Rydell, uh, finance director, RJ Stevenson, director of planning, engineering and building, Lisa Key, IT support, Todd Henderson, and then I believe, if he's still on or not, might have bounced off. We did have a representative from the Sewer and Water District. Oh, there he is. Uh, Bill Gen Genoway is uh, on the call as well from the Sewer and Water District. I will be taking roll call shortly. As I mentioned earlier, there are two opportunities for public comment. When that time comes, I will acknowledge public participation for up to three minutes. For the record, please let me know your name and if you're a City of Liberty Lake resident. To participate in Zoom, the public can go, can so indicate by choosing the chat feature on Zoom. You can scroll down and hit the chat button to raise your hand or to type in a question which will be read on the record when we get to that point. So with uh, that being said, we will start out with our invocation and uh, move on. God, our Father, I thank you for all the guidance and the blessing you provide us each and every day. I thank you for a wonderful 4th of July. Uh, great to see all, all the citizens throughout the community enjoying it, however they may be, and being safe while they do it. I ask that you continue to guide us and the rest of the council and staff as we make decisions for the community. I ask that you watch over all of those that are responding to the COVID situation, uh, from your first responders to local businesses uh, with all their staff and the citizens as well. I, I really can't commend enough. And thank you for their support as they continue to support our local businesses to thrive during this time. I ask that you watch over our community and help keep us all safe and healthy. In Jesus' name, amen. To the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. I'm going to take roll call at this time. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Kennedy. Mayor Pro Tem Kennedy. You're on mute, Mr. Kennedy. You might have to unmute yourself. Yes, please. Uh, we'll move on. Council Member Foyer. Here. Council Member Severs. Present. Council Member Dunn. Good evening. Council Member Kurtz. Present. Council Member Langford. Present. Council Member Comiscus. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Kennedy. I see him, but I still can't hear him. Send him a text. I can see him trying. 
Also attending remotely is Sean Bouts. I'm here. Okay. Uh, we're having some issues with Council Member Kennedy's computer and being able to hear him. So I'll call him on the phone and see what's going on. Mayor Pro Tem Kennedy, uh, Katie will be calling you to see if we can get it fixed. Okay. So if I can get a gender approval from somebody. I move the agenda, move the agenda, move the agenda as <laughs> awesome. That was uh, I heard Council Member Comiscus first. Uh, can we get a second? Second. I got a council uh, second from Council Member Stevers. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Not hearing any. We will move on to citizen comments. This is your first opportunity as a citizen to make a comment if you so choose. Looks like we have one. Uh, can you unmute DG? DG, I believe you had a citizen comment. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, this comment is to publicly thank the many people who contacted me in the uh, recent unrest of our nation when George Floyd was um, killed. And I want to thank them personally, as many of them are representative here today. Chief Asmus for his kind conversation and deliberate thoughts on how we as a community will continue to work together. The former mayor, Mr. Peterson, he and his wife sending heart emojis. Lisa Key in her statement of solidarity with all people everywhere. Katie Allen, who personally contacted me and called me. Many of the members of the Liberty Lake Police Department and Mayor Pro Tem Mike Kennedy in his text of condolences for our nation and for our community. I wanna thank them personally for the outreach. I am one person of several in our community who I take those comments from each of them as the same comments for each of them. Our nation faces a critical mask and understanding how we relate to each other. And I am glad members of this community represent that if they only know of one and only see one, they will reach out to that one in the hopes that that one forwards that information to all. There's a lot of work to be done, even in Liberty Lake. And we will not acquiesce our relationships to our law enforcement for their doing their utmost best to protect and defend us. And I stand united with each of them. Thank you. Thank you, DG. Are there any other citizen comments? Can I Okay, Anne has one for the record. Hello, my name is Mark Saba and I reside at 1221 North Melbourne Road, Liberty Lake, Washington. I am currently on the Board of Directors for Winter Glow Spectacular, assisting in fundraising. Our first fundraising event is the Winter Glow Spectacular of Liberty Lake Golf Tournament. This tournament will take place at Trailhead Golf Course on Saturday, August 15th with a shotgun start at 9 a.m. The format hole two-person scramble with two flights. The cost of the tournament is $100 per player, which will include the following. Green fees, golf carts, lunch, and two free drinks. Mulligans and raffle tickets will be on sale at the sign-in table on the day of the tournament. 
Registration forms can be picked up at the Liberty Lake City Hall, Trailhead Golf Course, Liberty Lake Farmers Market, or on the Liberty Lake Facebook page. Registration deadline is July 31st, so if you are interested in playing, please get signed up as soon as possible, as this tournament will be limited to 36 teams. The goal for this event is to raise money for the 2020 Winter Bowl Spectacular and to have some fun with family and friends. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mark Saba. Any other comments? Not hearing any. We will move on to Mayor and City Council reports and inquiries. Are there any comments from City Council? Hey, this is Dan. I'd pitch. Um, uh, as far as the uh, summer Friends of Pavilion Park events, uh, we want to recognize we're not in yet phase three, uh, that we, as a group, uh, wanted to try and be supporting outdoor cinema in our Pavilion Park, but we're unable. Um, currently, we're holding, I guess, a schedule. We're talking about dates. The first we want to try and recognize potentially is the 18th of July, but the question lies solely in what the status of um, I'm going to say the governor, governor's directive. So, but we're out there and we're really hopeful and we're looking forward to being able to have events uh, for our community in the parks when we're able. Why? Uh, well, Council Member I believe your hand is up. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Um, just wanted to remind everybody um, that we could really use some help covering the farmers market on Saturday morning. Uh, I know Katie and Lisa, um, you know, covered the booth last week, just two weekends ago. Um, either Mayor Brickner or I could make it. I know uh, Councilmember Kennedy was down recovering from his surgery. Um, but, you know, they were there uh, on their own time, you know, covering the booth. Um, as, and there was also a representative from the staff most other weekends as well. Um, <clears throat> I won't be able to make it this coming weekend or the next. Um, so just encouraging people to step up. And even if it's, you know, a couple hours out of the four, it's, it's a really great opportunity to talk to our citizens, find out what they're thinking, um, get some ideas from them, answer their questions. Um, it's well worth the time. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, as you guys may notice, for some reason, there is a countdown at the top of the screen that says that we have less than one minute. We're not sure why it's doing that. So if for some reason we get disconnected it in one minute, um, just try to log back into it, hopefully, uh, in case we get cut off. <laughs> we're not sure why it created the countdown. Uh, we're, we're, we're working on it. Uh, Councilmember Langford, I believe you're next. Councilmember Langford. Oden. Oh, he disappeared. There he is. Councilmember Langford. Yes, can you hear me? Yep. I believe you were getting ready to speak. My apologies for the technical issues. Hopefully we won't run into any more. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to advise the full city council that myself, Councilman Foyer, and Councilman Kennedy attended the AWC uh, voting delegation meeting. It was painfully long with uh, some areas that were being uh, stretched out. But anyway, to make a long story short, one of the uh, 2020 uh, initiatives by the nominating committee was to have uh, a bylaw passed at this uh, legislation that would require all future elected AWC uh, not, uh, committee members, not just nominating, but all the committee, uh, would have to have their uh, basic CML. And this was passed by the uh, body at this last meeting. And I think that's a wonderful idea. And that's all I have to tell you at this time. Okay. Any other council member reports? Uh, 
Okay. I have a couple. Hey, uh, Dan, I'm, sorry. sorry, Dan, I pitched one last one. Um, Central Valley School District had originally uh, scheduled a walkabout today at uh, River Bend Elementary for a um, elementary classroom, which had been outfitted for what's the proposed operations model for the coming season. Um, that was postponed. They'll be having that a little bit later on, but the district is working hard right now to uh, literally um, define what the in-person instruction for Central Valley School District will be. Um, very, um, very interested and want to make sure that um, the community is aware and understands as much about uh, the operations of their schools uh, as soon as it can be made clear. So I'll relay more as I know more. Thank you, Council Member Dunn. Any other council? Okay, not hearing any. I'll uh, move on to my report. First, I want to uh, say thank you to uh, everybody involved on getting the 4th of July set up. Um, we had some citizens that were very heavily involved on getting the fireworks around the lake uh, done. So I really want to thank everybody involved in that. And I also want to thank our internal staff on the amazing job that they did from Jen's crew to the police department to other city staff to help pull off the fireworks this year. Um, I have to say it was probably one of the better fireworks shows that I've seen um, overall. Uh, great response from the community as a whole uh, and, and very Excited to see uh, celebrate some sense of normalcy on such a an amazing day. Um, the boat show uh, or boat parade, I should say, was uh, quite amazing as well. There was a lot of people that had their boats decorated uh, around the noon noon hour. They did a boat parade uh, with all their boats decorated. Um, and we got to do some judging on that myself along with uh, some uh, younger citizens that happened to be down there. Um, some kids that were down there helped me do the voting, so that was fun. Um, I also want to acknowledge um, the uh, tragic event that occurred this weekend uh, over Lake Coeur d'Alene. Uh, we had two planes that collided. Uh, one of those individuals that passed uh, was a Liberty Lake resident, uh, Neil Lent. Um, so my condolences go out to his friends and family. And uh, we'll be trying, making an attempt to reach out to anybody in the area that might uh, have known him. Um, I also attended the AWC meeting uh, last week. It was a really, really good opportunity to hear what other cities are dealing with in relation to everything going on. Uh, I have to say that in the breakout rooms from the sessions that we participated in, um, the overall theme that we consistently saw was the uh, a lot of cities have had some big challenges in responding to COVID um, and uh, taken a, have taken kind of a reactive response, if you will, and uh, still trying to figure out how they want to utilize their PPE dollars uh, to help support their community. Um, and so it, it just kind of validates that our proactive response to everything really has paid off. Uh, RJ will get into some of the deeper dive pieces of the financial, um, but I really want to commend uh, all the staff on uh, our proactive response and how swiftly we were able to make things happen. Uh, I also want to remind the council that uh, it's going to be uh, vital uh, that you respond to Lisa's uh, request for um, your retreat as you guys are setting the stage for the retreat and um, it's going to be important that you highlight the key areas uh, that you feel should be discussed to help narrow down uh, what the key important things are. Uh, so please, please, please get your response to um, 
Lisa as swiftly as you can uh, so we can get that set up. Um, with uh, the challenges that we currently face, um, with the numbers increasing as a county, uh, there's no more movement or success in conversations on moving to phase three. Uh, as you can imagine, with the jump in numbers, um, they are putting a pause on us moving to phase three. And a lot of events uh, throughout the county really um, were dictated by the ability to move to phase three. Uh, one of those impacted for us was Barefoot in the Park. Um, they felt that we wouldn't really be able to do Barefoot in the Park even at a streamlined approach um, until we were in phase three. So we are adapting to that and assessing what type of things we could do uh, in light of that. Um, so more information to come. All right, uh, I think that's all I have, unless I'm missing something. Uh, so we'll move on to the city administrator report. Okay, we'll start tonight before with Jennifer Kent giving us an update on the 4th of July. Thank you, Katie. Um, we had a wonderful event as the mayor um, spoke of a few minutes ago and um, went off without a hitch. Uh, I wanted to let you know, and, and if you had any feedback on this, I would be all ears. This was the third year of a three-year contract, so we will be going out for uh, ultimately another three-year contract with uh, whoever gets the, the lowest uh, bid on it. But keeping in mind that each year of the three years that we had this event, um, the first year we did it, we had the most significant amount of fireworks quantity-wise. Um, if you recall, three years ago when we brought this uh, agreement to council, uh, council wanted to hold the cost the same over the three years, and they were able to do that for us, so we paid the exact same all three years. However, uh, the, the quantities of the fireworks decreased year by year because the expense of fireworks were increasing so much um, that we, have, we had to have a balance there. So if you had any feedback or ideas or thoughts on what the size of the show was this year and going forward, do we want it bigger? Do we want the same of what we've had the last three years? Um, that will help me when we are going out and looking for um, another agreement. Um, so anyway, I, I'd appreciate thoughts or feedback on that. And um, there was quite a bit of coordination last minute with Jeff O'Shea. Uh, trying to coordinate our event to, to go off and be timed um, along with theirs in tandem. Um, we put some some information out on Facebook, on social media, and spread spread it across the pages, asking for uh, people to weigh in on where they could see the fireworks. And at this point, we have 35 comments of different areas around the community that people were actually able to see the fireworks at the ball fields. Um, so that's really good feedback for us, even though they're five inch shells um, and we have fewer this year than we have had in normal years. Um, it was still a great show and I don't know that most people noticed the difference and uh, we have had nothing but positive feedback from the event. I think everybody was just thrilled to have something something going on on the 4th of July. So that's all I have. The yes. feedback you might have would be great. Thank you. Okay, moving along, Jocelyn is going to give us an update on the library. And you're going to hear Jocelyn, but you're not going to see her. Is that correct, Jocelyn? Yes, that's right. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. I just wanted to give you an update on what we're doing at the library. So we started last in May, so a while ago, doing our full pickup service. That is going well. Um, last month, we did about 1,800 of those, checked out um, 3,300 books or DVDs or whatever. Um, and then we've had about 2,100 downloads of um, audiobooks and ebooks. So even though we are not open to the public, um, the curbside service is definitely something that is of benefit to our community. Um, so our reading is ongoing. We are offering online programming um, as we've been doing to summer reading. So we have children's programs uh, once a week for the elementary age, two story times a week, and then we've got two teen programs a month and two adult programs a month. 
We are also now um, participating in a program called Check Out Washington. This is a partnership with the Washington State Library, State Parks, and the State Parks Foundation. This um, allowed us to have a backpack that has a Discover Pass that people can check out and use. Um, binoculars, some guides like wildflowers, birds, things like that. So people can place a hole on this backpack and check it out for a week and be able to go and um, be in Washington State Park. Um, let's see, we are also almost done with a online um, City of Woodview Lake Garden Contest that um, has been posted just for a couple of weeks. There were two different categories. We got about 15 entrants, which is pretty good for a first time online thing. Um, and we are hoping to do the judging probably later this week, and then um, we will be posting the winners. Other than that, the library is just preparing for phase three, so that when we finally get there, we will be ready to go. And that is all that I have this evening. Okay, thank you, Jocelyn. So moving along, a quick update on some COVID things, and then we'll roll into the financial. Um, if you recall, we bought some PPE products for our local businesses. The only criteria was that you have an address and a business in Liberty Light. And I wanted the council to be aware we have had 71 different businesses uh, participate and pick up some PPE products. Um, and when we added up the number of employees, over 1,700 employees. So we're really excited about that. Um, we are going to be saying, sending out a reminder to our businesses that we still have products. And so we really encourage them to come and pick them up. Our goal is to provide uh, PPE products so that our businesses can safely open and uh, adhere to the regulations that are currently in place. So we're, we're trying to um, do everything possible to reach our business community and things are going fairly well. Um, city services. So as we mentioned before, we've used our CARES Act dollars to hire some COVID cleaners and the City Hall library, police uh, department, our parks, our uh, park restrooms, I should say, also farmer's market. And that's really allowed us to um, provide the opening for some of our facilities to the public. So that was a, a good uh, move we made, I think, to keep our employees doing what they do well, which is working out in our community and having our COVID cleaners, making sure that our facilities are safe for our community and our, and our, and our employees. Uh, the phase status, uh, uh, Mayor Brickner already mentioned that we're in phase two. Um, we'll keep you posted what, if any, impact would be on our July 21st council meeting. At this time, I don't have any information as to whether or not it's going to be a Zoom meeting or an in-person in meeting. Um, Barefoot in the Park, we've already discussed that, and we still continue to work on some options. Um, we'll keep you posted as, as those options develop. And before I turn over to RJ to give you a financial update, just a side note, um, due to uh, Mayor Pro Tem Kennedy's audio challenges, um, Chris Kaminskis, Council Member Kaminskis, is going to be Mayor Pro Tem for the rest of the meeting until um, Mike's audio gets resolved. He asked that uh, we have Chris fill that role. So with that, I'll turn it over to RJ. Real quick, RJ, before you get started. Um, in regards to my report, I meant I forgot to mention, uh, for those of you that hadn't heard, there was an event over at Corbin Park. Um, it was a family uh, that was over there. Uh, they were canoeing slash kayaking in the river area. Um, it was a, a mom, a dad, and a daughter. Um, the mom and the daughter uh, we're having some issues in the water. Um, they were starting to uh, need help to get out. Uh, the husband, Luke Gardner, he jumped in immediately, was able to get them to safety, um, but unfortunately in the process, he passed away and drowned. Um, Luke Gardner was also a resident of Liberty Lake, so I want to take a minute to acknowledge him and his uh, passing and send my condolences to his family. Uh, we are also working uh, to get some uh, support to his family. Uh, there is a Go, GoFundMe uh, to support his wife and daughter. 
Um, they have three kids in total, um, but I wanted to uh, make you aware of, of that passing as well. So, RJ. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so uh, last week I sent to uh, Council uh, the uh, June uh, 2020 uh, dashboard. Uh, this has kind of been, a, this dashboard will be our, uh, our first look at uh, April's data, sales tax data that came in. Um, I did send out a revised report earlier today that had some graphs that I mentioned I was going to send with it that we'll go into in just a second. Uh, one of the things that I had to correct on the map, uh, on the finance dashboard is near the top under key indicators for total expenses, I had a number of 4.5. That was actually our current ending cash balance. The actual total expenses for 2020 for general fund and streets fund is 3.9 million. Um, and I'll kind of start there with that number. Uh, you know, back in April, we had just started making um, decisions to uh, reduce our expenses, to not have travel costs and some other uh, items on there. Um, in comparison with that number you see today, that year-to-date uh, number, uh, that is lower by about $90,000 from where we were at that time last year. So we, you're starting to finally see the change, and we're not bringing the seasonal glut that we have in the past. Um, in comparison with 2018, that number is just slightly under 2018 expense number. So um, I wanted to highlight that. On there for uh, sales tax um, for 2020, we did have a very good month. Um, and I'll go over more, uh, take a deeper dive in that. One of the big factors is we have the high school being built. And so far to date this year, we've collected 160,000 in sales tax for that. So if you were to back that out the number of year-to-date sales tax, you're kind of on par with where we're at in 2019. Um, uh, so one of the other items we see revenue collected for the year, we're at 5.2. I do want to note that 870,000 of that is from the lift reimbursement for Orchard Park. So if you back that number, you're closer to a 4.3, 4.4 number, um, which uh, the Delta between revenue expenses also correlates to what we've done in the past for this time this year. We're typically uh, about two to three hundred thousand dollars above our expenditures at the halfway point. Um, the uh, if there's no questions on there, and our permitting revenue is coming in strong um, as well uh, at this time. As for projects. Um, on the second page, uh, Pavilion Park, uh, the second phase is closing out. We are getting closer um, to finalizing, and that will be one we will seek for reimbursement for, uh, for lift dollars on that project. Um, Liberty uh, Lake Road Preservation Project, that one uh, tonight is uh, for consideration, but uh, so you know, we do have some actual expenditures in there when it comes for design costs and getting ready that one to go out. You'll notice the budget on there is 840,000 and that's spelled out in the uh, agenda summary that, uh, that the bid is coming much lower and this project was funded 70% by TIB. Um, so let's go to page three and take a little bit deeper dive into sales tax. Um, so being uh, April was kind of the first month that COVID was affecting most of our businesses in Liberty Lake. And we made some assumptions um, on how some of the different categories for sales tax were going to, um, were going to, uh, what we thought they were going to be at. Um, and as it turns out in a lot of cases, uh, it's been better than what we were, what we were thinking, what we were clued. So auto and sales tax, for instance, you're looking across, other than May, and let me touch on May of 2020, um, there was a couple anomalies, one of them being um, that the Department of Revenue allowed businesses to report um, sales tax uh, uh, to delay payment. And so we did see um, a couple large businesses on the auto side take advantage of that. They did pay in June to kind of catch up, and it's probably why you see that June is higher um, than 2019 number. The other one that there was a large uh, reduction in an auto uh, business. Um, they actually had it with a business that does not do anything with Liberty Lakes. It was misreported back in December of 2018. Um, when we got the money, the size of the amount was about 13,000. It didn't uh, it didn't spike anything for us to cause any concern or to look farther into it. But because of the times that were tougher, we 
found out that it was a company um, that never does business in there, and so they've recorrected the sales for that month. Um, but for June, we caught up. Uh, we're only um, uh, about 15% lower than we were at this time last year with, with sales adjusting for that. And we were thinking we would be down 70% uh, for June and this month. So we were we, we held um, very well. Uh, RVs was another one that we were concerned. We were, we were assuming that was going to be a 90% reduction in RV sales. Um, it seems to be stronger. Um, we, we, we do see a reduction that was stronger than what we were, what we were assuming. Uh, Construction sales tax is one where um, the uh, the collections have uh, year through 2020 have exceeded uh, what we did last year. Um, a lot of that is related to schools, but we're on, on pace on the construction side, even with the slight slowdown they had back in um, April. Um, we do food establishments. I'm going to page four. We're going to uh, we're ones we were concerned about as well. Um, there have been uh, uh, reductions in May and June on there, but not as to the degree that we would think. And year to date, we're still fairly strong um, on that one. Uh, other retail sales tax. This includes online sales. This also includes your Home Depot, your Yokes, um, your grocery stores, you, the furniture place we have on there. Um, but we were seeing strong sales through the entire period on that and into June. Um, so we're watching that one to foresee any kind of changes uh, to that. But that one has, uh, as you can see, the variance is almost 90,000 from where at this time last year. So we're seeing strong sales there. Um, the last category, uh, last one category includes everything else not included in this one. You can kind of see we're almost exactly where we're at this time last year on those sales um, as well. Um, any questions? I know I got the, the congrats out to you just today, so it's not enough time to digest, but are there any concerns, questions, highlights from this? A right. um, couple other points I want to make just with other um, some other taxes are refunds, or capital funds, our collections today is at 7% of budget. Um, so we, we anticipate that we'll meet budget for this year for the REITs, and so the REITs are important because they help fund some of the projects that we um, that we'll hopefully talk about at the retreat. Um, the golf course right now is 95% of where they were at last year in 2019's revenue. So even with basically having a month of uh, April off and having adjusting for the COVID, um, the golf course has remained strong in their sales as well. Uh, not related to report we did. Invoice Department of Commerce for co our CARES Act dollars uh, in the amount of $23,000 for last month. Um, this month in July, after the 21st, we can collect all our invoices. We expect a, a large invoice for them as well, probably close to about 50000 um, for expenses related to this, uh, establishing businesses and staff time. Um, and so I will let you know when those payments come in. Um, so what you take with this data right now, we're not proposing any changes uh, when it comes to um, hiring more seasonals at this time, unless it's a, to fill a position that has vacated. Um, we're still keeping our travel and training um, plan to get, uh, together with our reduction because we want to see how the next couple of months roll out, um, if there will be some adjustments to this. But we were uh, estimating sales tax uh, to be much lower than where we're at now. So we're ahead of what we're, what were our assumptions we were making two months ago. I think the gist of it is uh, from RJ's message is that everything's looking positive and uh, in, a, in a good light in comparison to our initial thoughts. Um, but we're nowhere near out of the woods yet. So that's why we want to maintain the course. Any comments Mayor? from council? Yes, Councilmember Langford. Yes, Mayor. I'd like to suggest that we uh, start looking at next year's budget a month or 60 days ahead of our normal period so we can start making some uh, analysis, including COVID and what it's going to do in the future as well. Yeah, we've actually uh, started those conversations uh, with the staff. Thank you, Councilmember Langford. 
um, in discussions of the budget for 2021 and uh, starting to move already in that direct direction with the conversations. Any other council comments? Yeah, I'm just really encouraged regarding um, taxes, specifically on vehicles. Um, that exceeds my expectations and, yeah, as well as our assumptions. Great to see. Okay, moving on, Katie. Okay, moving on. Thank you. A um, couple of updates. So one is on employment, and some of you are aware we had uh, a couple of vacancies. And so we have made an offer to a police officer who hopefully, um, if all goes well, should be on board by the end of the month. And then also our secretary tomorrow, his name is Ben Schmidt, and we will introduce you as soon as uh, there's a meeting where we can, um, he'll be able to come and we'll introduce you to him. Um, on another note, we do have some other recruitments, uh, one for a lateral police officer and also for a planning slash engineer technician, and those recruitments are going fairly well also. So just wanted to let you know we do have openings. Even though we froze positions, these are to backfill vacant positions that um, were vacated. So that's uh, the resources that we need to continue to deliver services to our community. Um, I'm going to give you just a very quick update on Harvard and Henry, and let's start with Harvard. July, or excuse me, yes, July 15th at this open, so we're keeping our fingers crossed. Again, we do not know for sure if the contract will be awarded, but there are a lot of very good contractors interested in bidding that project and it's a very competitive market right now. So, so far so good, but we still don't know whether or not WashDOT will take the step to award that contract when the bid's open. Henry Road, we're at 30% design. We're continuing to manage the scope because what I wanted the council to know is when WashDOT put the bid together, the budget together, I should say, um, several years ago, it was for our two-lane corridor. And we all know the importance of multimodal features, whether it's cyclists, walkers, strollers, runners, bike packs, or excuse me, golf carts, whatever. We are looking to increase some of the width of the road, getting a smaller footprint of right-of-way, which is a little bit of a trade-off. We don't need as much right-of-way. And the reason is because when we washed out look at the project originally, they had some what was called a slope size, which took up more right away. I'm not going to go into a lot of details right now. Um, Lisa and I are working very hard to keep this project in our budget, and we're continuing to take steps uh, to keep it within budget. So we have a meeting tomorrow, and we'll continue to keep you informed. If overall, the project is going well. The, the studies, the noise study, the archaeological study, the geotech study, everything's just moving right along. And, I have to say, and I'm Council Member Kaminskis and, and Mayor Brickman, when we're at the farmer's market, this is probably, and, and Council Member Dunn, um, this is probably the number one question that we get from our community is when is the Henry Road overpass going to be built? So things are still going well. It's, it's a large project. We just, our goal is to wrap up the design by the end of the year and then be ready when funds are available so we can move forward with construction. Um, council retreat uh, has come up. Uh, the mayor reminded us about the survey that was sent out. We're looking at August 2nd. Um, if that date doesn't look like it's going to happen, um, I think we be asking council to look at other dates, but right now we're looking at August 2nd. The valuation of city property, city assets, which would include the 22 acres, the town square, city hall, we're, I'm, we're getting figures together on market analysis and appraisal. And we would like to share that with you in executive session, the next council meeting on July 21st, so you have those numbers before we have the retreat. So we're working very hard to put all those numbers together and make sure that you have them. Um, we do not want those um, those figures as public record right now. They they're, would be used for negotiations if the council decides to go in any certain direction. So um, that's why we are wanting to share those inform that information with our council in executive session. Um, and then finally, events and reservations and programs this summer. As you know, our summer reading program is underway. Farmer's Market is on Saturday, um, every every Saturday from 9 to 1. Skyhawk Sports Camp is doing very well, and Jen also mentioned Challenger Sports Camp are doing very well. I guess 
There was a lot of uh, families that wanted their kids to get out and enjoy the, the park. And then FOPP events are pending. Um, we don't have any movie in the parks or bands um, scheduled for the month of July. And finally, I was hoping that you could get on your calendars August 20th, our employee barbecue. This is an appreciation event for our staff, Rocky Hill at 1130. And it's the theme of this year's uh, barbecue is going to be remembering Rudy. We've invited his family and um, we'll have an opportunity for folks to, to weigh in and share their remembrance of uh, Rudy Torres, our building inspector that passed away. We missed him dearly, and uh, this will be a nice opportunity to remember him and have his family present. So that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, two other dates. Uh, for anyone that wants to work farmer's market, um, July 18th, uh, I will not be at that um, farmer's market as I will be joining in on the uh, golf tournament fundraiser for Winterglow. Um, please make sure you get the word out for that fundraising golf tournament as it uh, will help support Winterglow. And then also uh, July 25th, uh, I have a prior obligation to be at. So just keep those dates in mind if you'd like to be a farmer's market. Okay, moving on, if there's a, well, let's uh, make sure there's no questions from the council. Uh, Councilmember Comiscus? Yeah, just a real quick question, uh, Mayor. You had said uh, 718 for the Winter Globe Tournament. I thought the earlier reading uh, uh, note from Mark Saba said that we were taking reservations to the 31st. Do you have that date right? Registration deadline is July 31st. The tournament will take place at Trailhead Golf Course on Saturday, August 15th. August 15th. Sorry. Okay. It's okay. Let us check. My, my apologies. Okay. Any other comments from the council? Not hearing any. Uh, Councilmember Comiscus? Yeah, uh, I was having some computer problems earlier. Can you go back to the agenda, Bud? Thank you. All right, I move action item number 9A, 1 and B, to approve, to approve the June 16th, 2020 city, ca city council minutes and approve the July 7th, 2020 vouchers in the amount of 236000 $763.61. Second. Second. Second by Councilmember Langford. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I got a thumbs up, Councilmember Kennedy as well. All opposed? Not hearing any. Ayes have it. Aye. Moving on. All right, I'll move action item nine. Action item nine. B General Business One to authorize the mayor to execute the agreement with Inland Asphalt Company in the amount of three hundred fifty six thousand three hundred eighty six dollars with a ten percent contingency to be managed by staff for the Liberty Lake Road Preservation Project. Second. Second, second by second by Councilmember Sievers, uh, Councilmember Langford. Yes, would it be possible for us to start including the 10% contingency uh, instead of having to make us add at the last minute? Uh, Ten percent, adding the 10% contingency to the total price. If I may, I believe it's in the in the agenda bill. However, the contract. Because that 10% is being managed by staff, um, we don't want it the 10% included in the contract amount. They're required to have change orders um, for us to take advantage of that. If something happens in the field where we discover something, the materials or the quantities are different, that sort of thing. So let me make sure I understand the question, Councilor Langford. So we award the contract to Inland and then 
We also asked the council to approve a 10% contingency to allow us to manage the contract. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand the timing question. If I may, the agenda bill reads that um, the contract is being on the $386,386 to inland asphalt uh, with a contingency fund not to exceed $35,639 to be managed by staff for a total authorization of $392,025. I think going forward, adding that final number would, would be really helpful because reading it as it's written to council member Langford's point, um, it's not totally clear if you're not reading through the rest of the agenda, which a lot of you know our constituents may not. Um, it looks it's ambiguous as to whether or not the 10% is included in the $356,000 or if it's in addition to. So um, gotcha. thanks for pointing okay. that out. Thank you. Yeah, um, I appreciate the clarity. Thank you. I'd ask that the contract amount be um, clearly stated, though, and remain that way. Perhaps we right. cite two totals, one reflecting the contract amount and one reflecting the with a uh, contingency. Agreed. Yeah. Any other comments from the council? Not hearing any. All in favor? Aye. 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 I got a thumbs up from everybody. <coughs> or an aye. All those opposed? I'll acknowledge that I saw a thumbs up from Councilmember Kennedy as well. Ayes have it. Next item. Um, actually, before I move this next item, I do have a question. Um, I know, uh, Mayor, you had mentioned um, this item at, at our last meeting. Uh, I'm just a little confused as to why it's coming before us for approval because we have a policy in place that says that you have authorization up to $5,000. I fully appreciate the transparency of the discussion uh, and bringing it to us, but I just don't see the I don't understand why it's on the agenda for us to approve. More for the purposes of the transparency piece. I just, I just don't want us to start going down this rabbit hole. You know, where, where do we, when do we stop putting things on there? Again, you know, I think it's very important to have the discussion <coughs> around this item, why we need it, the amount, but I guess I just, I, I don't want us to start burdening the, the agenda with things that would have normally, that should normally fall into your authority, your realm of authority. I'd, I'd agree with uh, Councilmember Kamenskis on this. This is Hugh, that I appreciate the transparency wholeheartedly. I feel like you were transparent in the last go around and um, you could probably put that in the mayor's report or something. Just say, hey, FYI, we talked about it. We're moving forward with outsourcing the update of the personnel manual. Uh, would be would be sufficient sufficient in my mind. Okay. I mean, it, it's there. I can go ahead and move it. Um, but I would I think we just need to be um, more cognizant in the future about you know. Um, just be, we love the love the transparency, but um, no need, at least in my mind, to bring this for approval. But in that spirit, I will go ahead and move this since it is on the agenda. So I move general business D number two to authorize the mayor to sign the agreement with Angela Mar Mariani in the amount of $1,800 to update the city of Liberty Lakes personnel manual. Second. Second from council member Sievers, I believe. Correct. All those, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I got a thumbs up from uh, Council Member Kennedy as well. All those opposed? I have it. Moving on. First read the ordinance, Sam. Oh, sorry. Public, public hearing. I jumped again. My apologies. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council Members. Um, this evening we have a public hearing. Uh, 
Harvest Parkway vacation of right of way. Just to give you a little background. There we go. So um, to give you a bit of background, the three parcels uh, that are highlighted um, in the image on the screen uh, were recently purchased by Western States Equipment Company for the development of uh, a uh, heavy equipment sales, rental, and service operation. Um, and uh, as part of the, the uh, short plant conditions of approval for the Toledo Station short plant, and as part of their development or their uh, sales and purchase agreement, they are required to extend East Catawba Avenue uh, from, its, uh, from its eastern terminus to the uh, eastern uh, property boundary here. Uh, what they have requested is the vacation of uh, the Harvest Parkway right-of-way um, from, from just below the elbow south of Selkirk Middle School. And um, this is the section that they have requested to vacate. Um, they are also proposing to dedicate um, an emergency turnaround easement that would uh, comply with the hammerhead design uh, contained in uh, Appendix C of International Fire Code because their intent is to put a gate up and provide an employee access by a harvest parkway. The heavy equipment will be and, and customers will be accessing the facility via uh, East Cataldo Avenue uh, in the extension that they're going to prepare. So, uh, the vacation of right of way procedures are established in RCW 3579. Um, uh, and in accordance with those procedures, uh, the council did set this hearing date by, uh, by a resolution number 2274. Um, also, in compliance with the RCW notices, notice was sent out to all adjacent property owners and posted on the site. Um, and public hearing notices were published in the Spokane Valley uh, News and of course on our website. So there's several conditions uh, of approval that are recommended. So Western States Equipment Company um, will need to reimburse tip and lift for the proportionate share of the, um, the, the, the right of way improvements, uh, which total $98,854 and a little bit of change. Um, they're also going to need to dedicate public water and sewer easements in the vacated Harvest Parkway if this is approved. Um, they will need to also provide improvements and dedicate the emergency turnaround that I showed you in the previous slide. And uh, they would be required to pay all closing costs and reporting fees associated with the vacated right-of-way. Um, we, uh, you will, be doing the first read for the ordinance. It does reference the agreement that it addresses those conditions of approval, etc. Um, this is a public hearing to take public testimony. To date, we have gotten no comments or concerns from the public on this. Um, I know that um, Heather Black, who is with Western States Equipment Company, and Tim Thomas with uh, Bowton Construction um, are participating in this meeting and we should be taking public testimony, but we should also give the applicants an opportunity to, to our comment. Okay, so Heather, I believe you're unmuted. It's connecting. Heather, can you hear me? Can you unmute Heather? Todd? Still showing she's muted. While we're working on that, 
I will take any citizen comment. Uh, Heather, can you hear me? Yes. So we will open the public hearing up at uh, 8.05. Give the opportunity for any citizen comments specific to this topic. Any citizen comments? Not hearing any. We will close uh, the public hearing at 8.06. Looks like Heather fell off. Oh, she might be back on. Heather, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yep, I'm here. I had to re-log in for some reason. All right, Heather, we wanted to give you an opportunity to uh, speak on anything relative to this project. Yeah, I apologize. I've been listening the whole time, and as soon as Lisa started speaking, my volume um, and audio disconnected. So I'm very familiar with the project. I'm not sure um, what she has stated and what influence you want from me, but... Um, if you have any specific questions, I'm happy to answer them. Any questions from the council? Hey, I would just say I, I'm grateful for Western States uh, bringing their business to Liberty Lake. Welcome. Yeah, we are very excited to be joining your community. I've heard a lot of great things about it, and we're definitely excited to be a part of it. Thank you, Heather. I appreciate you joining us. Okay, we will move on then to our first read ordinance, Ann. Ordinance number 267, City of Liberty Lake, Portland County, Washington. An ordinance of the City of Liberty Lake, Washington providing for the vacation of a right of way, vacationing for a portion of Harvest Parkway, severability, and establishing an effective safety. Okay, we also have a second read. Ordinance number 266, City of Liberty Lake, Spokane County, Washington. An ordinance of the City of Liberty Lake, Washington, authorizing the maximum capacity of a local sales and use tax to fund investments in affordable and supportive housing to be codified at Title II, Chapter 3 of the City of Liberty Lake Municipal Code, providing for severability and establishing an effective can I get a motion? I'll move, yeah, I'll move ordinance number 266. Second. Second from council member Severs. Discussion? Not hearing any, all in favor? Excuse me, Mayor. Oh, sorry. Hi. Yep. Citizen comments, sorry. Yep. Thank you, Ann. Any citizen comments? on uh, number 266. Not seeing any. Okay. There is a question from Council Member Moore. Is there a way for the citizens to get a copy of the financial dashboard prior to the council meeting? Can we vote on this one first? Yeah, we'll work on that. Let's go ahead and get a vote on this. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I got an aye. I see a thumbs up from Councilmember Kennedy as well. All those opposed? I have it. Introduction about pending agenda items. Okay, our next meeting, July 21st, we have a workshop on the network analysis. This will, um, we got, Lisa and I got a sneak preview of this network analysis today. Um, it's all good news, and we look forward to sharing it with you on the 21st of July. Um, this is looking at our corridors in our town, and it also identifies traffic movement recommended 
um, changes and improvements to our transportation system. We are also looking to approve a sand salt box. Sounds like it might be a factory. If not, it's used for snow removal. So Stephen is getting some prices and we hope to have that ready for your consideration on the 21st. We also will be disposing of surplus items. So we'll be looking for your approval uh, to support that. Finally, there's uh, two final plats that are potentially going to be ready. One is Hawkstone that we think is going to be ready on the 21st. The other is um, not sure is River Crossing East. That one might be moved to early August. And then we have the second read on the right of way vacation at Harvest Parkway that we just covered. And then finally, the executive session to, to discuss real estate. Okay, this is our last opportunity for citizen comments. Any further citizen comments? Not seeing any. Uh, Councilmember Kurtz, I believe you had your hand up. Yeah, for the upcoming agenda items, can we get an update on the um, the police department generator process and, and how that's going? I know we got an update from Chief, I think at the last meeting, um, but I'm just curious how that's going since it was a pretty important topic for us to discuss. Absolutely, we'll provide an update. Thanks. Anything further? Last chance. Not what? No me. executive session in this meeting? No executive, <laughs> no executive session. session. I missed You're it, man. Hook. Come on. Okay. Hook. Hook. okay. The next all right. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for joining. Be safe. Good night.